What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down Wednesday's nine-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings FanDuel and our sponsor, Yahoo. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently here today because, again, we want to be concise. We want to give you great information. So we're going to go guard, forward, center. Just like we do on the Live Before Lock show, I think it's going to be a little bit more beneficial, especially with so much MPE, that is multi-positional eligibility that exists on multiple multiple sites. And Yahoo, of course, we're going to continue talking about both uh, the point guard, shooting guard, but uh, the the guard position encapsulates everything. The forward uh, position encapsulates everything and center as well for every single site. Try to keep it a little bit tighter, but... We're in the middle of a crazy, crazy little slate here. Uh, Anthony Simons just started to get going here a little bit, which is nice for 75% of us who just played infinity amounts of the guy. Uh, Guess who didn't play well? Svima Kylo did not play well. Guess who really played well for me in tournaments? Derek Rose, but didn't matter because I don't have enough Alec Burks. Ryan, how are you doing, my dude? Yeah, I just want to touch on what you said earlier. We will still uh, label the guys by position. Uh, Some of them just have point guard, shooting guard eligibility, but just filtering out the show, I think... I'll move, uh, I'll move a lot better. We won't have to be redundant going over and over again. But touching on tonight's slate, Alec Burks really paid off a $6,200 price tag. I'm a sucker to play Alec Burks, and I was still even shied away from that. I, I love playing him when he was on the Jazz, the Kings, the Warriors, the Sixers, Knicks. I've, I've, I've played him whenever he's got the chance to start. And even today, I was a little shied off. I really like Derek Rose's price tag. Uh, it's too. unfortunate. I, I think I nailed everything else besides Alec Burks today. I had a lot of Scotty Barnes, a lot of Triple J. I'm obviously a ton of Anthony Simons, I think, and CJ McCollum. We'll see how the night ends up going. Interesting late swap opportunities with Chemeza, Met- ah, Chemeza Metu entering the starting yep. lineup uh, with no Marvin Bagley. So he's playing off pretty well right now. Unfortunately, Devin Booker hurt his hamstring uh, for this uh, red hot uh, Phoenix Suns team. We'll see how long he's going to be out for, but. Unfortunate for that Suns team to lose Booker, and especially for those who had Booker in your lineups, that's a real bummer uh, you know, in a great tempo matchup. Uh, it's a game that I'm looking forward to catching the end of after we uh, record this thing. Yeah, we're going to fly. That's what I'm saying. I want to watch the second half of this thing, too. It just started halftime. Uh, I said we were going to record at halftime of these games because uh, I watched uh, a lot of the first half of, of this entire window of games, mainly because so much exposure. And uh, let's talk Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook. I'm mad at them. Let's talk Devin Met Booker. You can't be mad at a guy getting hurt, but it was somebody on FanDuel that I have a lot of. So I'm probably dead over there. Um, that's that's just kind of it. Studs didn't necessarily go off here outside of James Harden at the moment. He played really well again uh, tonight, got off to a really hot start, finished out pretty well, but Russell Westbrook, man, uh, absolute floor here. No LeBron James here for a while. What's your outlook for this Lakers team going forward without LeBron for another week and a half? Dude, uh, these guys, there's so many Hall of Famers on this team. They got to figure it out. Uh, they just got to figure it out. Uh, I mean, it'd be a, it's a disaster if they don't. And yeah, LeBron James is the glue. Uh, if he returns two negative uh, tests, he'll return. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think he's out for 10 days at, as of now, but things can change based off that. Yeah, this Lakers team has been disappointing. Uh, all the rumors have it. Frank Vogel's on the hot seat. They just kind of figure it out. I don't know what's going to take. Uh, is it Anthony Davis needs to carry the shoulder, uh, carry the load on his shoulder, and uh, they just kind of figure it out. It's uh, I think uh, the bottom half of the West is eh, it's not as strong as it was last year. Maybe it's tough, up for debate. They need mm-hmm. to like be like a, se- a six or seven seed. A team this old doesn't want to play in a playing game. Uh, it's disappointing to see. I'd like them to gel together. I like when their star powers and stars are doing well. Adds more, adds for more drama in the league, and drama is always good in basketball. Yeah, Greg Ehrenberg and I talked a little bit on the live before lock show today about that. The West is very, uh, very top heavy. Not very nice at the bottom. The way that it has been multiple years. I said there were multiple years where you could go better, a little bit better than five hundred, and you still might not be in the playoffs in the West. And I don't think you're going to have that problem this year. They might be looking a little bit like the East in that regard in previous iterations. But I digress. We've got a nine gamer to get talking about. Hit that like button for us. That goes a long way if you're listening to us on YouTube. Check us out on all of the new podcast feeds. Again, we have our own podcast feed here for the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. Please give us a five-star review over there. We're going to start doing some giveaways here very soon. We're going to start giving away some free weeks of awesome O Plus Platinum. Uh, We're going to start giving away some other fun things uh, in the future. But the only way to do that is to leave a five-star review. That automatically makes you eligible for all of those things. So check that out. Thank you so much for all of your support here. Lots of views. Everybody's been checking us out. I guess 
they like this duo. They like the Rin Pack and Eric Lindquist duo. I like Emac too. I like Pete Rogers too. Uh, so I appreciate those guys for filling in for us. But again, this is our job to, to cover this. That is what we're going to do for you all. So Ryan, you're ready to get going, my dude. Let's ride. There it is. Luka Doncic, 11,600 there on the top end of guard on DraftKings. So, small forward eligibility as well. LaMelo Ball there next, 10-4. Trey Young, 9,800, point guard only. Uh, Jalen Brown is questionable. Uh, I think he's truly questionable here up against the Sixers. Uh, injury management program. What a weird way of putting that, Boston. I saw that tweet and like laughed out loud when I saw that. It's like, oh, the injury management program. No, you literally have like 15 dudes to manage. You're just doing the regular thing. There's no program. It's just you're going to just not let Jalen Brown play if he's not feeling 100%. Bradley Beal there at 9K. De'Aaron Fox up to 8,800 here. That thing is just continuing to climb, uh, but it's buoyed a little bit by that 53-minute, 54-and-a-half uh, quadruple septuple, I don't know, a zillion overtime game against the Lakers, so I'm probably not going to be going that direction. Where it starts to get interesting on this slate is we've got Anthony Edwards questionable, and we have seen a lot of crazy stuff out of Minnesota lately. They've been playing some really good games here. We've had people in the comment section saying, oh, they're top 10 defensively and offensively in the last 10 games and whatever else. Well, Anthony Edwards is a big reason why two-way basketball player does really well both sides of it. If he's out, I mean, D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, and just about a, bi a billion scrubs we can be looking at rostering here. How do you kind of look at that? And then talk to me about the top end of guard here on DraftKings. Yeah, top end of guard. I mean, you touched on Luca, Lamelo, Trey, Jalen Brown, Bradley Beal, De'Aaron Fox. All those guys are priced appropriately, slash a little too expensive. My favorite in terms of upside and price, all things put together, is probably Bradley Beal at uh, 9K. Uh, I do think an upside of 60s there. I mean, Luka Doncic is sensational, but you're going to have to pay up for that 11 6 price tag. We've seen this here. DraftKings in its algo is pricing up these studs. It's making uh, us play a lot of guys that. We aren't really excited to play about um, play on a nightly basis. Look, De'Aaron Fox is up to eighty eight hundred dollars. That's expensive for De'Aaron Fox right now. Anthony Edwards, like you said, eighty six hundred. Shout out to his flip phone. D'Angelo Russell, eighty four hundred. These guys, DraftKings, been quick to press these uh, press these guys up. And now this Minnesota situation is very similar to the Bulls situation. Uh, over the last couple of days, I've been really looking into uh, seeing what teams are doing. And now that we got a call, like it, about about a dozen game, a uh, dozen and a half games or so of a uh, sample size of looking in to see what's happening with these teams. The Minnesota th uh, situation is very similar to the Bulls situation. When all these guys are playing, it's kind of going to roulette uh, with like the Bulls have DeRozan, Vooch, and uh, Alonzo Ball, and Zach Levine. These guys have Russell, Edwards, and Cat, and it's like you got to pick and choose. And look, all any given night, they have a, they have a night, but having the confidence in one, it makes it really difficult. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander in a matchup versus Houston. I'm all about that. $8,300. Uh, sign me up there. Malcolm Brogdon, $7,700. Uh, playing really well. But in the guard position, uh, shooting guard only, Brandon Ingram. I love that $7,500 price tag, and I know you do too as well. I absolutely do. Uh, one of the guys I have circled there at the position for sure. $7,500 there, shooting guard only. Kind of a different uh, look of him. Uh, he's been a small forward, or you know, he had small forward power forward a lot of last season. So uh, looking at a shooting guard position that, you know, you can play Lamella Ball, you can play Bradley Beald, where he's point guard, shooting guard eligible there as well. Brandon Ingram, looking like a guy that I'm going to probably roster a hefty amount. She Gilgis Alexander up there, 8,300, I do like as well. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. coming off his first triple-double. Probably not going to be going there with the bump up to 7,400, even though those are back-to-back -back really quality games out of him here. Uh, Houston still, I mean, that's that's a, a spot that we're going to talk about a little bit over on FanDuel because we always talk about Houston on FanDuel. That's just kind of how that works. Um, but rounding out the guard position over on DraftKings, looking at a, a number of these uh, salary-saving options, I mean, there's just kind of a, a I, I don't want to say it's, it's trappy because he's been really, really bad. But Devontae Graham is going to be playing 30 minutes in most of these competitive games. He's 4,600, and it just looks weird to me. What's your interest level in him? Because I just feel like, you know, Brandon Ingram, I want a roster, but Devontae Graham, too. Why has he been so bad? Uh, give it some time. I think it's just like he's been on and off with injuries, probably some a combination of conditioning, getting used to the system, new team. I mean, it, change is not always easy. It's ne never fluid for basketball players. It takes time. Uh, so that's the thing. But in a game of DFS, $4,600, I'm all about Devontae Graham. 
Uh, I think we can definitely go there. Some other guys um, that you can pay up for. Keep an eye on Jalen Brunson. I believe Porzingis is questionable uh, with the situation. So Brunson might squeak in some extra minutes and some attempts as well. Other guys at their price point, uh, as you went down, that I, re- I stood out to me. I think Drew Holiday, sub-7K. Love to take some chances there. Uh, Josh Giddy continues to be just a guy who can uh, fill up the stat sheet. You'd like him to just be a little more aggressive offensively, but always a, a great tournament option. Spencer Dinwiddie, 6K. I, I, I think I like taking my chances there as well. Levert burned a lot of guys, and I, it's uh, it's becoming a reoccurring theme. Uh, Levert might be the new buddy healed, but uh, Levert oh, is someone I want to take with some chances that yet again. He burned a lot of guys last time out, but I think you nailed it with Devontae Graham. Uh, another guy, if you want to spend a little bit lower, in the guard position, uh, Malik Beasley, if there's no Anthony Edwards, 4,500, but your boy Chris Duarte down at 4K was ejected last game. Yep. I don't mind Duarte all the way down at $4,000 uh, at that guard position uh, at shooting guard only. Uh, it, it Being in this guard spot, it, you can see a lot of spend down options on a nine game slate. We touched on Bones Highland. His price went up $600 mm-hmm. last time after a very strong performance. Another guy, I think, uh, just going down the uh, sub 4K. Other guys who stand out to me, I think uh, uh, Cam Reddish is thirty four hundred dollars as well. Uh, some a guy who can just get hot off the bench. Uh, I, I think taking your chances on Cam Reddish isn't uh, terrible on a nine game slate. Just looking for some value right now. Yeah, and we're gonna probably get some value. Obviously, there's a ton of news. What we're talking about are the guys who stand out now. And then you have to compare them to the guys that show up later. That's kind of on you. That's actually, it's on the Live Before Lock crew, which I happen to be a part of. So Greg and I will try to clean that up for you. And of course, Adam Scher and Lafayette doing a great job on the deeper dive. Absolutely crushing the analysis there. Somebody also said that they wanted more stats. They wanted stats. So we're going to throw in some stats here as we're going around as well. Malik Beasley, 92 DraftKings points per minute with Anthony Edwards off the floor. I mean, he's a guy that you've brought up a number of times on this show at the guard position as well. And I know we're kind of drilling in, uh, getting used to just talking about everything position by position, but 4,500 there for 30 plus minutes probably and a little bit of an increase in usage as well. Maybe another guy. There there are a number of cheap shooting guards that we can kind of mix and match if we want to, no? I completely agree with you, uh, definitely. And barring some news, it, it's going to open some things up, especially spending down a little Nine game state, it's big enough where you're going to get a little more stars and scrubs uh, type of build. So keep an eye on studs who can always have high scoring things. It's not that I don't like Luka Doncic. I, I do think the value can be a little stronger to find him to get there. Look at 11 6, you want him to put up 75, 80 points to feel confidence in him requiring on a guard, uh, on, a, on a slate of this size. So, and Getting a guy like Malik Beasley, and if there's no Anthony Edwards, yeah, I mean, that can help that happen um, over the course of time. But it's just not strong enough at this moment. But if there's no Edwards, yeah, I'm all about it. So on DraftKings, it's easy to group everything just by guard here on Fantasy Cruncher as well. Now let's head over to FanDuel. The first time we're going to have some point guard and shooting guard, but it makes a lot of sense to talk about them together because there's so much overlap. Of course, at point guard, you have only uh, where you can roster LaMelo Ball, Trey Young, and then it becomes just so many other guys that you're able to play on a combination there. Uh, Luka Doncic, point guard, shooting guard. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, D'Angelo Russell, Terry Rozier, Cole Anthony. Pretty much everybody else up there in that range are guys that you're able to kind of play on both sides. It sounds like Cole Anthony is set to return on Wednesday. That's good news for Orlando because he's been revelatory this season for sure for them uh, not going to be revelatory for the rest of these Orlando guys who have been priced up a little bit uh, because he's just not been there that helps uh, but now with him back probably going to be less enticing to play a bunch of Orlando like it seems like we have been the last couple slates that they've appeared but looking over at the shooting guard spot at the top end there yeah Luka Doncic still there 10-6 Jimmy Butler 9200 Bradley Beal 8700 shooting guard only Paul George 8600 that keeps sliding down there Sacramento's going to be on a back to back and I'm expecting Paul George to start doing early in the season Paul George things here soon that seems like a tag that I just need to start investing in here as well softer pricing at the guard position but talk to me about some of the spend ups here on FanDuel oh yeah spending up on FanDuel on the point guard shooting guard uh Spots, just taking a look, you touched on Luca, Jimmy Butler, $9,200. I think uh, matchup versus Cleveland, I think he could be aggressive and has tournament winning upside. Bradley Beal, uh, $8,700, really like that price tag, but love the $8,600 Paul George price tag. 
Um, right now, just going down the list, I think he's standing out money, money, my favorite plays, all sites, things put together. Really Same. like that. SGA, uh, we know a matchup versus Houston, he can do some damage as well. Edwards and Russell, uh, it's that conundrum of kind of picking your poison. If news works out one way or the other, you can definitely uh, go to Russell if there's no Edwards. And it's a matchup versus Washington. Washington's a much improved team than last year. Going down to next tier of guys, uh, guys who have point guard, shooting guard eligibility. Uh, guys are expensive now. Rozier is expensive at $7,800. I have no interest in doing that in a matchup versus Milwaukee. I like Drew Holiday on the other side of things. Malcolm Brogdon, only $7,200. I'm all about that price tag. Point guard, shooting guard over there. Chris Middleton, only $7,100. There are going to be games where other guys outside of Giannis get going. And uh, Boogie Cousins is set to make his debut for this uh, Milwaukee Bucks team and use that Unreal. kind of gun under the radar. It's just Brolo has no timetable to return, and why not take a shot with Boogie Cousins? Uh, I don't blame him, really. It's a, it's a very good team already, as is. And Boogie Cousins is probably good enough to play 12 minutes of basketball. Is he a plus player nowadays? To be determined. Uh, but he did look pretty slim and trim. And some uh, workout videos I was seeing uh, with the Bucks. Of course, you saw the workout videos. Do tell me, break down some Boogie Cousins for me. Was he like? Uh, he was pretty big last time we saw him, and, and it was it was tough to watch him there in Houston for a little bit. He was he turned out all right in the Clippers. He had some playoff moments in the uh, oh, Clippers. Finals. He had that too. I was just thinking of Houston when we actually rostered him quite a bit in the playoffs. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, it was it was tight. It was a little dicier. There were some Demarcus Cousins games though. I don't want to besmirch him completely, but uh, there was that one game he just went completely nuts in the playoffs. And there's going to be those games where Budenholzer decides to rest those starters, and Demarcus Cousins is going to be the man, and we're going to have to play him. <laughs> uh, but other guys spending down Devontae Graham yet yet again stands out fifty two hundred dollars. Eric Bledsoe fifty one hundred point guard shooting guard as well. And uh, on the guard position, that's really. Uh, Oh, uh, sorry, Jalen Brunson as well. I, I missed him. Fifty six hundred dollars. I think yep. uh, you taking some chances with Jalen Brunson is someone we can uh, consider as well. And keep an eye on the Edwards situation. Uh, Malik Beasley might open up as well. Same with Jimmy Butler too. Questionable entering it. If he plays, I want to play him. If he doesn't, I don't because I don't want zeros in my lineup. How about that for analysis? You all like that? Me too. Let's over to Yahoo and round out guard. $49 for Luka Doncic. That's the top end of guard. That seems a little bit cheaper than what we've had at some of these positions here in the past. Of course, we have Giannis as a spend up. Nikola Jokic as a spend up there at 54 and 58. But they're in kind of their league of their own. I expect Luka to kind of get some attraction simply because he's the cheaper of them. And on Yahoo, $49. I mean, that's still almost 25% of your cap which is just crazy to think about. You have to really pay up for nice things, as Ryan likes to say, over on the Yahoo slate. So uh, Luka Doncic would be that. LaMelo Ball, $44. Trey Young, 39 Bradley Beal, 36 Malcolm Brogdon, 33 uh, It's It's getting interesting there. Shooting guard is really, really brutal with uh, Bradley Beal there. D'Angelo Russell at $30 is going to be a guy I click on a lot in the event you have no Anthony Edwards. Over the course of the last year, you're looking at D'Angelo Russell, 1.19 DraftKings points. That's a pretty close comp there. 1.19 uh, there and 1.14 FanDuel points per minute with Anthony Edwards off the court. It seems like an all systems go for me there at shooting guard on Yahoo. Uh, who are some of your favorites here at the guard position over there? Yeah, looking at the guard position, I mean, paying up for nice things in Luka, $49. That is expensive. LaMelo Ball is also very expensive at 44 Going down the list, I don't mind D'Angelo Russell's $30 price tag. I think that's pretty favorable. If there is no Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, you can definitely go to him at $29. I'm all about that. Uh, other guys just spending a little bit lower. Uh, Yahoo's done an exceptional job with their pricing. Spencer Dinwiddie, $22. Look, he's the same price as Jalen Brunson. Uh, so taking advantage of Dinwiddie here, uh, definitely a priority for me. Uh, just in the next year, uh, cheap, uh, cheaper guys who have guard eligibility. Devontae Graham, only $16. I think he's he's kind of been the theme of the show right now. Um, Malik Beasley, $14, uh, the injury situation, if that pans out for him. Uh, but that's really about it. Anyone else in the men or close to the men that you're willing to take some chances on, Eric? I'm literally scrolling through the men, and it is a bleak, dark world. It is sadness and broken dreams and nothing that's to good. really be found That means the pricing has been done well there. It's really, really good. Um, I'm going back over to point guard. I'm taking one double look over there. I see nothing that you want to be playing at $10. So uh, Facundo Campazzo is about the best that I've seen. And we've got Bones Highland back. So that's not going to be something I want to do. So I don't I don't really see anything really to click on there. Sad times uh, at shooting guard. 
same story, just different position. Uh, it's it's really, really well done. Props to our sponsor. This is going to be a very fun slate over there when you get some solid pricing. You don't just get some freebies. You might get some kind of an Anthony Simons type play like what we had today. If value opens up somewhere here, if you get Jimmy Butler out, yeah, sure, we can take some shots on some guys, but I don't really see it. I'm there with you as well. That kind of does it for the guard position over there. I, I think you did a good job of rounding out everything there. And you know what people need to do right now, Ryan? What? They need to take advantage of this promo on the screen. New Yahoo users. Get one free month of Awesome Plus Platinum. That is new users. Of, we still love you if you're playing over at Yahoo, but you already have it good. You already know that you're playing in the best DFS tournaments around the industry. They have the $1 contest that they had for the Thanksgiving slate, which I still can't get over. Just throwing out a million bucks. Thanks so much, Yahoo, for such ridiculousness. That made no sense, and I love you for it. And then lowest management fees you're going to find on any site, period. And now... For a new Yahoo user, if you haven't been able to check out those fun things, now is the time because you'll get one free month of Awesome Plus Platinum when you deposit $10 or more and enter any paid contest. It doesn't get easier than that. That's every single sport we offer behind the paywall, not just NBA, but NFL as well. NHL is in full swing, MMA on the weekends, college football, college basketball, you name it. If it's got contest for it in the DFS space, we've got content for it. That's a Laffy thing that I just stole. I apologize to him. I don't know if he has it copyrighted, but if he does, there we go. Thank you so much to Yahoo for their sponsorship. Check out this promotion today. All right, we're heading to the forward position. Ooh, we're going to do really, really well timing-wise today here. On the top end, Giannis and Tedekupo there at forward on DraftKings, 12,100. Gigantic tag for him, no doubt. Really depends how much other value you get, but he's starting to be a guy that you need 70. Like, you just kind of need it. And it's weird to say that if we get a bunch of value that pops up in like the 3K, 4K range, sure, you can make him work and he can go for 60 and you're fine. But the event that you're going to just play him flat out and it stands like it does right now and you get Jimmy Butler ruled in, Jalen Brown ruled in, Anthony Edwards ruled in, Christoph Porzingis ruled in, going to be hard for me to get up to Giannis as opposed to Luka Doncic, who you can play at small forward. Jason Tatum up there at 10-3 obviously becomes extremely appealing there. Uh, if he, if you get uh, no Jalen Brown in there, could not have uh, showed up with the floor even more. Two for 16, one for five from three. I had the lovely privilege of watching that stupid game and watching him lose me money. And then, you know, I came back from the crypt in the late slate over on FanDuel. So uh, yay, good times. Paul George there at 10-2. We've talked about him. We really like him over on FanDuel. 10-2 on DK. Still don't mind it, but going to definitely be a lot lower owned. Not as much of a priority. And then Demonis Sabonis. 9,400 coming off of an eruption, 16, 25, and 10. You had talked about that on, I believe, two episodes ago of the Slate Star podcast about how unbelievable that was. Miles Turner's got that Q tag next to him. If he's out, hard not to love Sabonis tomorrow. Talk to me about the top end of forward, Ryan. Yeah, top end of forward. You touched on Giannis, Luca, Tatum, uh, Jimmy Butler, only small forward eligibility, $9,300. Some interest there. If you can find a way to get in Giannis with some appropriate value, I don't mind it. Uh, 12, 12, one. Yeah. Look, it's, if he's going to be low on, that's, that's when you don't want to be a little bit above the field on these studs, right? On a nine game slate. When, uh, when, who are the most likely high scoring player, the studs, right? And they can break out for 70 plus fantasy points. And really, obviously you have to nail everything else to, to carry to the top, but it helps getting 70 points from, from a player at any given salary, but 12, one, you know what you're paying for. Uh, he's a stud. It's going down a little bit. Uh, Demonis Sabonis, $9,400. If there is no Turner, I can go back to that. He was sensational last time out. And I, I, I think in a matchup versus Atlanta, I think uh, Sabonis just felt like he was in a groove. Uh, and I think that's really helpful for Sabonis' confidence and Carlisle's confidence in riding him out. Other guys have forward eligibility, Edwards and Middleton. Really like Middleton's $7,400 price tag. I think, uh, I like I touched on on the Fandle side of things, other guys outside of Giannis can be good uh, fantasy-wise as well for this Milwaukee team. But other uh, mid-tier guys, Kyle Kuzma, $6,200. Hey, man, he's been producing small forward, power forward eligible. He's been pretty solid fantasy-wise as well. We'll see what happens with Harrison Barnes. I will like Harrison Barnes if he's playing because he's, he's kind of cheap for $5,900, and he's been pretty solid fantasy-wise. I, I think there will be some sort of minutes limit if he does play. Uh, but at $5,900, I think you can take your chances there. Going down in the next year, guys. Hmm. Got Darius Baisley, 
in the same matchup against Houston. I know he's disappointed a lot of people last time out, but I'd be willing to take my chances with him yet again. Now, forward is a little tough to spend all, uh, all the way down on. Guys who have small forward, power forward eligibility. No one really in the cheap tier that I'm like, okay, uh, I have confidence to really go there. I, I did mention Reddish earlier. Reddish is questionable, but uh, I don't know how much confidence I can really go to that. Maxi Kleba is someone who I rostered last time out at $4,300, but it's a, it's a Dallas situation. I like him a lot if there's no Porzingis, but keep in mind mm -hmm. uh, with what, what's happening there. And the last guy I want to mention, same price range, uh, Marcus Morris, power forward eligible. Took the last game off. Uh, I just I hope he's starting. I hope he's getting back in shape because I, I want to play him. You were going to fire him up so much at 4,600. You were you could not have said his name more times, and then he got ruled out. I always love when that happens. One of the one of the not fun parts about doing this show is, you know, you recommend a guy, you're so excited to play him. You see he's going to be super low owned. You're about to fire up a bunch, just like we did Derek Rose here today. I know you and I both did talking about him yesterday. And Marcus Morris gets ruled out. That's not enjoyable. On the bottom end, I actually think there's a number of plays that kind of make some sense here on the bottom. Your boy Shangoon, I mean, he's like not really remotely getting the minutes to be viable there at 4,200, but even a little bit cheaper. You got Chemezi Metu, 3,800. I don't know what he's doing tonight, but this could be a guy that ends up popping in projection models if I don't know what those minutes or what the total is. I have not looked at a second of that Sacramento game here uh, since we started doing this podcast, but uh, obviously somebody that uh, you got onto a little bit later there. And then Herbert Jones coming off his best basketball game period played 34 minutes. And so for me, if somebody's going to be 34 minutes and they're not named PJ Tucker, I'm probably going to have some interest at the forward position sub 4K. Herbert Jones of the Pellies there, 28.5 up against the Clippers, played big minutes in that big blowout win. Helps have Jay Val shoot a zillion for a zillion from three. But uh, do either of those guys intrigue you? Mm, not, a, not really. Uh, but not really. I think. Yeah. I think they're fine. They're not exciting. I, I think they're it's a nine game slate. They they're tournament options. They're dart throw tournament mm -hmm. options. Not that they're like guys who I'm looking to actively get aggressively over the field on. Okay, that's fair. Nas Reed thirty four hundred again. I think there's going to be some different weird minutes rotations. No Anthony Edwards. He's kind of a glue guy who can play the three and guard a number of different spots. Nas Reed might actually see some floor with Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed. 1.18 DraftKings points per minute on the season with no Anthony Edwards. Um, but Anthony Edwards is questionable. If he plays, all of this goes out the window and you have to basically play Anthony Edwards or D'Angelo Russell or Carl Anthony Towns, just like you do on other slates. All right, let's head on over to FanDuel, shall we? We got it on the top end there, 11,200 at small forward there for Giannis, 9,700 there for Jason Tatum. Jimmy Butler, 9,200 available at small forward there. Paul George, 8,600. But the guy that I really want to talk about, Christian Wood. FanDuel did some aggressive pricing. Or at least I, I think they responded to a 61.7, 59.2 fantasy point outing from one Christian Wood. He's 8,600 against OKC. And I still have interest in this identical matchup. He just went for 59.2 in 30 minutes. Talk to me about Christian Wood specifically. Christian Wood's been a stud since he moved into the center role. Um, obviously much more fantasy friendly. And I think it suits his game in the modern NBA a lot better for Christian Wood to play up at that five position. And he was a stud last time out. I expect it to continue the same exact matchup. Now, I will take 60 fantasy points yet again at that price tag. Uh, but... They did aggressively price him up at eighty six hundred bucks. Look, you're, uh, on on that uh, forward power forward small forward slate, you're gonna miss out on guys like Giannis Butler, Jason Tatum. Uh, I think Paul George is someone I want to go to uh, yet again. Uh, eighty six hundred dollars. I think I prefer George to Christian Wood at the same price tag by quite a bit. If there's no uh, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo becomes a rock solid option. He's already in play if Jimmy Butler plays at seventy seven hundred dollars. That's kind of how the power forward uh, position is uh, shaping up. Uh, small forward only, Brandon Ingram, $7,400. Love that price tag. Look, I think he's uh, getting his groove going. The team's just been on and off with all these injuries. There's just, like no chemistry with this uh, New Orleans team. They're just an absolute mess. Uh, Zion's, uh, I think, clear to do, uh, work, uh, clear to work out. We'll see how him and Jonas Valanciunas talk about some oh my God. massive, massive. <laughs> front course of girth right on the like for the pelicans it's just huge dudes uh we'll see how they clog the paint together but 
other small forward power forward options that you can take your chances on. We touched on Karis Levert yet again, fifty four hundred dollars. Mm. But I, I think tournament guys are like Will Barton, sixty four hundred dollars. Uh, I think Miles Turner, if he plays, I like him at sixty seven hundred dollars. But anyone else that stands out to you? I know PJ Washington, someone that you considered, um, but he didn't start last game out. But if you were to start, would you like a forty nine hundred dollar PJ Washington? I mean, don't I probably like him either way as long as the ownership isn't out of control? Um, 31 minutes still up against Chicago, even though he didn't start. So he also avoids maybe some of the usage you'd have from LaMelo Ball, some of the other facility or the other ball dominant guys, Terry Rozier, only have maybe one of them on the floor when he enters for his first rotation. So that's something to keep your eye on. These are kind of the small, minute edges that you can find. When somebody doesn't necessarily end up in the starting rotation, sometimes that might make them a better play. And it's so counterintuitive, but it really depends on the case, depends on the guys who are starting, depends on how, you know, for Milwaukee, they usually bring Giannis off the floor six minutes into the game. And some people start tilting about such things, but they don't understand. He usually comes back in right around the two minute mark or at the beginning of the second quarter and just smashes right in that kind of way. And it gives little bit of room for Drew Holiday, a little bit of room for other guys to get going. There's sites where you can kind of take advantage of type stuff if people aren't paying attention to the rotations like that. But P.J. Washington still saw a boatload of minutes, so I think he's still somebody that you can maybe fire as long as the ownership isn't out of control. Crazy to see Herbert Jones priced next to him. Again, I think Herbert Jones might have a little bit more steam than you think. And I'll go back to Trebezi Metu, considering, uh, you know, looking over at the DK slate and then on FanDuel, um, is Metu somebody that you can play at a forward spot? Uh, no, he's center only there. So we'll talk about him there at 4,400. But he's got a double-double in less than three quarters. By the way, Lakers went on a crazy run because of Malik Monk here in the third quarter. I just pulled it up because I said I hadn't. And then I'm like a puppy who I have to look at it right away. You've got a nice little parlay going, I believe, <laughs> don't you, Ryan? Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, See, we can talk this on this show. Well, there's a long ways to go. We know, we know, nothing is final till we see zero on the clock. Uh, we've, well, they we've were getting beat up. They were trailing by nine at halftime. Now they're up eight, and it's all Malik Bunk, baby. Yeah, uh, it, he came, brought his superpowers to the table for sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Anything else for the power forward position? Because like for me, it's just Tristan Thompson, 4,700, probably meh. I don't need to probably make that happen over there. Uh, there's Marcus Morris, 4,500. That's blaring at me. I, I want to click on his name as well. Uh, is that going to kind of be the the main guy that we're both going to go to to play tournaments with tomorrow? Probably. Uh, but keep in mind the new situation with him. Yeah. Uh, and if he doesn't play Serge Ibaka, Serge Ibaka played 25 minutes. He yeah, was my yeah, showdown yeah. special play. He was like 1% in showdown, which was fantastic uh, over on FanDuel the other day. And so I just want to shout out Serge Ibaka, sub 4K, 3,900 over there. Last guy I'll throw into the mix. Yeah, another guy just small forward eligible is Chris Duarte. I think it's someone we can go to for sure. Okay. And now uh, Rashawn Holmes came back and he's been playing pretty well. Uh, 6700 so right. Price tag against his Slippers team. No, I don't expect him to put up Valanciunas numbers, but uh, Holmes can put up some damage for sure. Rashawn Holmes currently. There's 52.7 seconds left in the third quarter. Lakers up nine, but Holmes 27 and two on nine for nine shooting. That's called efficiency. 100. percent You can't beat it. You literally cannot beat it. There's that. No, you can't. Uh, he he was a uh, great like I guess if you. I guess uh, trying to get him in because he was, I figured, going to get a, a few extra minutes with no Bagley yeah. potentially. Uh, so, and him just coming off of injury, I thought his ownership was going to be a little lower. He's in all my speed, Mikhail Luke, garbage, terrible, no good, very bad teams. Oh, He's not yeah. in any of my good teams. That would have been the smart move, right? <laughs> to get on to some Rashawn Holmes. But God forbid I do the smart thing in that regard. Let's go to Yahoo and round out the forward position here. And then we'll take it home here with center Giannis and Ted Acupo, $58. I repeat. Giannis Antetokounmpo on a budget of $200 is $58. That is crazy to think about. Paul George, $45. Jimmy Butler, game time decision, $45. There at the forward position, Jason Tatum, $42. For me, the conversation really begins with Damanis Sabonis. If you don't have Miles Turner in there, and that is the first game right off the bat, he will be extremely, extremely popular at $36. I will be looking to probably go less than in the event that that news comes out really, really. Uh, people are going to be writing him up all day. People are going to be talking about him uh, in this spot, on this site, and then around the entire industry coming off of a nuclear game like crazy at $36. I understand he's a really good play. If you're playing cash games, you would play 
some Demontis Sabonis. I would have to imagine it's so hard to talk about a hypothetical cash build this early, but like thirty six dollars, that's looking like the best play on the slate at that number. No, for forward. Yeah, I, I think he's pretty rock solid. I, I'm willing to save a seven uh, seven dollars more and go to Brandon Ingram, who has forward eligibility as well. Beautiful. And he's power forward only over there on Yahoo at twenty nine dollars. I think that's a pretty rock solid play as well. And just like a rebuttal off your Sabonis play, but I think Sabonis is a strong play himself. No real arguments there whatsoever. And if Porzingis is healthy, I think you can take your chances on Porzingis. It's an ownership pivot off of Sabonis, barring all the news and indications headed in, in favoring his uh, favoring his way. Other guys, I mean, Yahoo's done an exceptional job with the pricing on the slate. It's been really impressive. Uh, it's going to be a tough one to really have confidence without any news. I mean, uh, just going down the list, Buddy Heald, uh, small forward only, $23. Uh, if there's no Harrison Barnes, he's a, he's going to be a tournament play yet again. Larry Markin in it at $21. No issues there. Gordon Hayward, 22 Gordon Hayward's just not the same offensive player. He doesn't need to be on this new Phoenix team with Miles Bridges uh, sending his game to new limits and new horizons, uh, literally. But uh, Miles Bridges has been a stud all year long. If you want to spend down a little bit, Herbert Jones is $11. Chemezi Metu is $10. Now, that's some value that we've been looking for on this Yahoo slate. Yeah. Uh, if uh, Metsu might be popular uh, if uh, there's no Bagley and Barnes tomorrow, but right if you so, at $10, he does a lot for you on this Yahoo slate. He's gigantic for this Yahoo slate. I think that's definitely the guy to highlight there. I, I repeat, double-double here, less than three-quarters of work. He's a really, really good play. It sticks out big time to me, so uh, no problem getting to him there in that spot. That's all I got really for the forward position over on Yahoo. I'm going up and down the list. And, you know, you can talk about Jayshon Tate here as well. This Houston OKC game, two terrible, terrible basketball teams. But Houston winning three in a row. Fascinating. Beating Chicago, beating Charlotte, beating OKC. One of those is surprising. Or sorry, two of those are surprising. One, not so much. But again, against OKC again here. Uh, happy to be firing up a little bit of Jayshon Tate. That's kind of it. Let's go to the center position and round out this puppy making phenomenal time here today. We've got Giannis again, and he's eligible there. But Nikola Jokic, Nikola Jokic had revenge in his heart and put up 56.75 against Miami in that win. Wasn't something you absolutely needed on that slate, not even remotely close, actually, when he's 11-4. And now Down he's buoyed up to 11-8. What was that? Down goes number one Duke. I already saw that. That happened 10 minutes ago. Why do you got to do it? Just because I grew up a Duke fan? You yeah, just had to do that? I had to rub yeah. it in. God, what? Why do you do this? I'm trying to be professional here. Be professional. They lost by five. I get that line was so trappy. It was so trappy. Duke minus on, three. Couldn't be Ohio State. Come Unraked on. Ohio State. Unraked. Couldn't, be, it, couldn't you be take care of business and beat Ohio State? But all right, continue. Yeah, no, it's all right. I just lost a lot of money on Duke. I don't want to talk to you. Here we go. Joe LMB, 10,700 there. Carl Anthony Towns, 9,500 up against Washington here. JVAL, 9,200 coming off of, I don't know, 7 for 8 from 3, 15 for 24 from the field, and 70. It was nice to be invested in a little bit of JVAL here the other night because uh, that went well. Talk to me about the top end of center. Centers, centers, centers. Uh, it's nice because we can roster two on some sites where you get utility. Uh, well, with MP on fan you can roster four maybe. But, uh, well, let's take a look. Uh, Nicole Jokic, all the way up at 11.8. Love that price tag. Uh Sorry, don't I mean love that play at that price tag. I think he's a great pivot off of guys like Giannis, upper tier guys. Look, I talked about this Minnesota conundrum with Cat. I like Cat a lot. It's just it's it's tough to pinpoint on when he's going to get this offensive load. Uh, it's sometimes Edwards gets going, sometimes it's Russell getting going. And I think it was due to happen with uh, them all three guys actually playing basketball hey, consistently Ryan. together. DraftKings, 1.42 DraftKings points per minute with Anthony Edwards off the floor and Anthony Edwards' tenure alongside Carl Anthony Towns. I might be paying attention to that Anthony Edwards news tomorrow if I were everybody. Yeah, I, I that that is key news. If Edwards is out, I love both Russell. I love Russell, Beasley, and Cat. I mean, in love a matchup too. versus Washington, I, it's going to be all exciting to play them. Look, Joel Embiid uh, will be very low on, I think, like sub 5% maybe. But he has the ceiling to be the uh, highest scoring player on the slate. And that's going to have some uh, tournament interest in uh, myself to go there. I think I'd be willing to pivot off Christian Wood. But if he, uh, I say that now, but $8,900, he was such a stud last game in the same matchup. 
it's going to be tough to go there uh, like with that price hike. I think saving $4,000 to go to a guy like Rashawn Holmes at $5,800 makes a lot more sense to me. Really, no one cheap. I don't want to really go uh, really cheap on this slate, on this nine-game slate. I think the opportunity cost is way too high. You can miss out on guys like Embiid, Balanchunas, Christian Wood, guys who have 50-plus uh, point upside. There's no real reason for me to go really sub uh, 5K on the center slate. It's just I feel like I'm going to miss out on some Massive, massive fantasy point performances, and I think uh, that'll be essential uh, for winning something big tomorrow. Lakers up 16, Ryan. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Take those tickets to the window. Yeah, Mo Bamba came off of a freaking Sealy game, didn't he? 47.75 in 35 minutes there. Fire him up a little bit here and there as well. Um, on the bottom end, I'm not looking to punt center tomorrow. It's just not even remotely interesting to me. I guess Serge Ibaka's 3,500. If you were to get Marcus Morris out, that would be all right with me, but it's probably not going to happen. And I'm going to want to play Morris instead and probably not Ibaka, but that's just something to keep your eye on. And then maybe some Nas read in your life as well. 3,400, but not anything that I'm enthusiastic down here whatsoever, not remotely close. All right. Going to fan duel center. Again, it's nice to be able to talk about this and Yahoo here. Or it's just centers that we're going to be covering. Nikola Jokic, 11K there. Joel Embiid, 10-1. Carl Anthony Towns, 8,800 there. Uh, all three center only over there. Carl Anthony Towns at 8,800. If you get Anthony Edwards out, I expect him to be a zillion percent owned at that number. And I really don't care. I'll have a ton of him. Talk to me about the top end of center. Top end of center. Very similar situation uh, like we talked about on DraftKings. I mean, the opportunity cost of just missing out on center on FanDuel. Uh, in years past, you could just get one, and you have to nail it uh, to really get there. And obviously, multi-position eligibility has made it easier for that not to burn you as much. But look, Valanchunas, $8,200, I think is going to be very, very popular, but rightfully so. Yeah. And uh, I think he's – dude, he went 7-7 seven seven from three. He like – a new player with this uh, New Orleans team. The only bright spot for New Orleans has been him this season, it's felt like. So – I think he's pretty solid. I can't fault you if you want to spend up for Jokic, but Cat sub nine K. God, I want to play play him so much, but <laughs> I know the situation there. It's it's uh it's not just working in his favor as it has in years past. It's a new, essentially a new offensive scheme that they're running where Cat doesn't need to be as aggressive for them to play at their best. So it's uh it's it's unfortunate that we Cat's uh, gonna. I think his price is gonna continue to dip, but. There's going to be some ceiling games sprinkled in with that throughout the season. I just hope I can nail them. Uh, on FanDuel, yet again, I don't have really any interest in going any one sub 6,500. I think uh, Wendell Carter Jr. is probably the last guy I'm willing to take some chances on who has center eligibility. Yeah, PJ Washington sub 5K, but if he only starts, I'll go there. It's a tough matchup mm -hmm. versus Washington, so not too inclined. Oh, sorry, tough matchup against Milwaukee. Not too inclined to go there, but it's the Valentina show on FanDuel for sure. It's, yeah, I don't see a single thing. Chemezi Matu, 4,400. He'd be the one guy I'd click on over on FanDuel underneath that. That's all I got. We've said his name a number of times. God forbid he doesn't play well tomorrow now at this point. That's just kind of what's going to happen though now. Nikola Jokic, $54 on Yahoo to round this all out. Joel Embiid, $47. Carl Anthony Towns, 39 We're getting interesting. Bam out of bio sitting there questionable as well for Wednesday. I mean, this could be, and I've kind of kept this quiet, Jimmy Butler and Bam out of bio. You get both of them out. This is chalk Miami day. That's just what this becomes. It is a chalk Miami play. All of the dudes, Kyle Lowry, Tyler hero, all of the human beings on the planet. You just kind of click on their names and that's the new slate that you've been given. Uh, I believe Dwayne Dedman as well has a Q tag next to him. So you're looking at PJ Tucker possibly playing center. We could be talking about Udonis Haslam, right? Udonis no, Haslam. They, I don't know if Udonis oh, Haslam will play. They have a uh, Yomer Yurt seven, who's an exceptional, exceptional fantasy uh, producer in Omer Yurt seven. Uh, he's a stud fantasy player. Uh, if he, if you were to some reason start Omer Yurt seven is someone I I'd be willing to hit the lock button on. That's how bullish I'm on in this fantasy. Production. Look at that. But, that's I don't think I don't for. think we'll get Omer your seven day by any means, but keep an eye on the Miami situation. It could happen. If you get Bam out of bio and Dwayne Tedman out, you are going to hit it because you already have Morris out. That's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be locked button your seven day. Yeah, but I mean, only if those guys are out. We, we there's a lot that needs to happen. Uh, 
I know, but you need three things to happen. You need, well, actually, you need two. You need Bam and you need Deadman out. My guess is one of them plays and then the other sets. That's just kind of my lean. But yeah, you're at seven. My God. What a what a slate that would become. What a slate that would become. Looking at Yahoo the rest of the way, Jonas Valen shoot is 34 there. Jared Allen, $30. Montrez Harrell, so expensive. Bo Bamba, 26, is fine. Bobby Portis. Now that you got cousins there, I don't know what those minutes are going to necessarily look like, but he is playing under 30 here the last two anyway, partially because they were dominant against Denver. They were dominant against Indiana. Maybe he still just completely plays the same amount of minutes and it's just a, a moot point. PJ Washington, $16. I think that's a little intriguing. But who is your favorite play at center on Yahoo? Ooh, fair play. Uh, probably Rashawn Holmes, $21. I like that price tag a lot for Holmes. I think, uh, especially on Yahoo, where you can roster two, center and utility. He definitely stands out to me. Uh, I really like uh, Christian Wood here at $34. I think that price tag makes a lot, a lot of sense. Keep in mind, uh, Dean Wade and Teddy Osman are both out for uh, Cleveland, so that might just sprinkle some extra minutes for their front court and guys like Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. Uh, so with those guys being out, uh, I, I do think we can get some extra minutes sprinkled uh, along their way. That's really about it. Yahoo, uh, obviously, you, you can pay for yourselves in Jokic and Breed and Cat. Love Cat's sub $40 price tag. There's not many times where you get Cat sub $40. So if there's a site I want to play Cat, it's probably going to be Yahoo. Probably never. It's beautiful. I love Cat tomorrow. He's going to be a big stand of mine, especially if you get Anthony Edwards out. Oh, my God. Uh, that's for sure. And Demonis Sabonis, I love him. But again, uh, somebody I might be looking to play the game theory number. Check out the NBA Boom Bust tool. I think that's one of the best tools at Osmo to encapsulate how, how owned somebody is compared to their chances of going nuts. And I expect Sabonis to be very popular if there's no Miles Turner. So I'm just throwing it out there. It might be a stand I have to take going up against a guy who just went nuts the last game. But Ryan, we just did it. We covered it. Under 50 minutes, under almost 45 minutes here. Any final words for the people here on the first time we've gone guard forward center? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was an experiment. Uh, these are such things that we can do with the slate starter. Uh, thank you so much for those who have already left some uh, five-star reviews. We'd love for some of those to trickle in. Um, and people have been uh, have won uh, Osmo Plus memberships through the other uh, podcast streams that have left reviews. So please start re leaving reviews on our podcast feed. Some people will reach out with some Osmo Plus. It's the holiday, so we're in a giving mood out here. Follow him at, at RINPAC. Follow me at Eric Lindquist. Those are good things to do as well. He's Ryan. He's very successful at DFS. I'm Eric. I'm very average at it, but you know what? I've had my bright moments. We'll see you guys later.